This week's Ion NPI brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit is from Raspberry Pi. It's and juicy. It is the it's RP2040. The, it's delicious, yes. Finally, we've actually been waiting for this to drop and we've been anticipating the RP2040 on I on MPI from Raspberry Pi. It's their yes. first microcontroller chip, and we've we featured Maxim and ST and Analog and, and Atmel and Microchip and all those people, and, and they're wonderful. We love them, but we also want to give some love to Raspberry Pi because they have finally released the chip that is in the Pico and so many uh, develop, development boards that we you can call the RP2040 development board series. You can now get that chip so you, the viewer, can make your own RP2040 boards. So. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's called the RP2040. And um, this is the same chip. Right now, there's only one chip. Um, and it's the same chip that you can find in the Raspberry Pi Pico. So you can see it in the center there. I mean, I think part of me believes that like half of the reason they made this chip is just because they wanted to see their logo etched on a microcontroller. Because like, that's freaking, wouldn't that be cool to have like an Adafruit logo on a microcontroller? Yeah. Know, maybe one day. One day. All right. Uh, it's also in our Feather. RP2040, which by the way, we open source the design. So if you're looking for like a core that you can use, that's like a, you know, the Raspberry Pi Foundation actually looked at it and it kind of like fixed all the little mistakes I had. So if you want like a design that's ready to go, that you can uh, copy the schematic or layout even for a known working RP2040 design, check out the Feather RP2040. And of course you can fit on very small boards like the uh, QD Pi 2040 uh, here as well. And best of all, it's $1 which is a great deal. It's a good price for a microcontroller as powerful as this one. So it's a, a dual Cortex M0 and it's running really fast. It's uh, 130 megahertz. It's got a ton of RAM, but it doesn't have any flash. We'll talk about it in a little minute. Um, one thing to note, and just because you know people who are wanting to use this in their designs, this is a 0.4 millimeter pitch QFN56, I think. It's, I haven't had a lot of problems with bridging, but it is a fine pitch chip. So definitely this is not an easy hand solderable chip. You, you kind of can hand solder, especially with some hot air and some flux and some paste. Really, you know, you definitely need to have a, a custom PC before it. So it's something to watch out for. Um, this isn't a dip chip or even like a large SYC that you can like use as your first microcontroller. Hopefully eventually they'll design a version that has bigger pads maybe, or you know, it's, it's fewer pins and larger pads. But at this time, right now, it's only available in one package, the QFN56, with 0.4 millimeter pitch spacing. Um, the name is, uh, designates what's inside of it, which I think is interesting because it sort of implies that there might be other configurations. So the two is a number of cores. Remember, it's a dual core. The zero is the M0 core, which is, you know, it's a, it's a very popular ARM Cortex 32-bit core uh, we've seen it in the SAMD21, of course, STM32F1X uh, series is the Cortex M0. Um, Nordic makes a bunch of to the NRF51 series is the Cortex M0. Cortex M0 is very, very popular. It's a very easy uh, to use chip. ARM GCC has great support for it. It doesn't have DSP or floating point support. If that's something you need, they do have some helper functions in the ROM for floating points. So it's not like as slow as doing it in pure software. However, it, d it just doesn't have SIMD, it doesn't have you know, floating points, it doesn't have DSP. If that's important to you, and it's not good enough to do it in software, this chip isn't for you. Um, next up is the RAM. So this is where it's interesting. So there's a ton of RAM. This has a 264K of RAM, which is a lot of RAM for a Cortex M0. Usually these kinds of chips have like 16K, maybe 32K. This has a ton, which is great. If, if you need to like buffer you know, a camera or a, a full display or a TFT or whatever, you need a lot of RAM, this chip has got you and it's all contiguous as well. And then finally, how much flash is in it? And like I said, these have zero flash on board, which means you're gonna have to add another a chip externally to add flash. Um, here's all the things uh, built in. So uh, you the, the full dual cortex, the SRAM, the multifunction GPIO, I'll show you the, the pin map. Uh, six pins are required for the execute in place external flash memory. Um, there's built-in hardware for the most peripherals you're used to, and there's four ADCs. And not a lot of ADCs. It's the only thing that's kind of like a little anemic compared to some chips, but of course you can always connect an SPI or I2C um, expander, and it is 12-bit, so you get good quality. And of course, uh, Team USB support with host and device. Um, 
for the peripherals, so this is kind of repeated, there's DMA and all that good stuff and PLLs. Um, the peripherals are two hardware UARTs, two hardware SPIs, two hardware I2Cs, 16 PWM channels, and they're split across all of the GPIO. Now, one thing you might notice is like, well, where's the I2S? Where's the PDM? Where's, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's usually in the peripheral, like rotary encoder management, um, maybe motor timing control, whatever, IRDA support. All that would actually be handled by the PIO state machine. I'm not going to get the whole thing, but basically it's a pro mini programmable state machine that you can use to make complicated bit bang uh, patterns. So you could do stuff like bit bang DVI or bit bang ethernet, but you're not actually bit banging it because you have this tool that's doing it for you. It's great for NeoPixels, for example, because NeoPixels are a very simple protocol, but you have to get the timing perfect. Um, they're great at simple patterns of data that just have to have perfect timing. Um, and this is the internal structure. Uh, you can DMA everything back and forth. It's kind of kind of a standard uh, Cortex M0 um, structure. There's a little bit of on uh, on chip cache for the execute in place because again, flash memory is on an external chip that's um, accessed via QSPY. These are all the GPIO. I'm not going to go into all the GPIO and what they all do. Of course, there's a debug port. There's Crystal. Um, every pin can be UART, SPI, or I2C, but it's not fully crossbarred. It just means like every other pin is a UART RX. Every other pin is an I2C, SDA, SCL. You're not going to have like complete free control to assign anything to anything, but you're always going to be able to, there's like five options for every pin. So you always have some configuration that's going to work out for what you want to do. For external memory, just factor that into your cost. You know, you're going to have to have any size you want, but I like this 8 megabit uh, QSPY um, flash from GigaDevice. I like this chip. But, you know, Winbon makes chips, Adesto makes chips, tons of people make chips. It is required. You, you really can't use this chip without having external flash memory and also an external 12 megahertz crystal. Um, for firmware, there's a lot of options. There's MicroPython. There's Pico SDK. There's... Lots of examples in C. There's um, CircuitPython, there's Arduino. Um, so to start, don't forget, we have CircuitPython support. People are adding their boards. Uh, you can go into the boards directory under ports Raspberry Pi. Honestly, copy and paste something that exists and fill out your pin structure and how much flash memory you've got. It'll probably just work. Uh, we've got for Arduino, there's two ports available. Um, I actually kind of like the, this Philhauer port. It's got a lot of functionality. And it works very solidly, and it's it's a low-level Pico SDK, so it's you can still use all the Pico SDK stuff that you know and love um, inside the Arduino core. Uh, so check out uh, this for Arduino support. It's beta, but I've been using it with success. Uh, and of course, Arduino like very recently also released um, RP2040 support using Embed as an underlying core. Um, I've used it a little bit, but not as much. Uh, however, uh, it's exciting, and they said that they would be willing to take pull requests as well for boards. So, very exciting to have two possibilities there. That's available on DigiGig. That's right. You can pick it up for one dollar. That's it's right. One dollar. Yeah, cue that. I'll buy that for a dollar from Robocop. I'll buy that for a dollar. And then you uh, sent me a little bit of a video. I was going to play a clip. Okay, on so that. this video, it's because you can be didn't read all about the RP2040, but this video shows the capabilities of PIO to do. Um, like decoding of data, driving an, an HDMI display natively. Like there's no encoder in between. You just connect the pins directly to the HDMI cable and it can, or DVI cable, and it can actually, uh, or VGA cable with some resistors, and you can mimic a BBC microcomputer, which is amazing for a dual core Cortex M0. I think they overclock a little bit, but not that much. Um, there's a lot of performance and capability you can squeeze out of this by using the PIOs. So I just thought this was a cool, cool demo. So, short URL there, product ID there, get it on DigiKey, and all Yeah, they're selling in reels of 500 or 30, 
400. There's two real sizes, 7 inch and 13 inch. They're currently out of stock because everyone has them out of stock. However, sign up and you'll be notified. Uh, I know that the Pi Foundation is, is pushing more into inventory as much as possible. So sign up, you'll be notified, and then you can uh, use our designs as your base. Design your own RP2040 board. Let's say I'm Pi on MPI.